We all know that the secret to improving your PC gaming performance is to add more RGB lights. But what if you can't fit enough inside your PC case? Just put them on your desk. You put the lights on your desk. Alright, obviously, we all know that sarcasm, right? RGB lights don't make you a better gamer. You're already a better gamer because you're playing on PC. Oh, that, that was That's... All right, off topic. Look, let's get to the point. I built two addressable RGB LED towers and set them right next to my monitor, one on either side. Why do that? Why did I do that thing? Well, number one, it's awesome. Addressable RGB LEDs are awesome. That's why there are a billion Philips Hue products out there along with every competitor on the face of the earth. Number two, I needed significantly better lighting anytime I use my webcam at my desk. Whether that's for recording segments for YouTube videos or just for video calls, it's got to be better than what it is right now. And then number three, the coolest thing about this whole project, it's actually an experimental bonus feature that frankly I'm going to save talking about until the end of this video. It's what we call a hook. Trying to keep you engaged, huh? Now, speaking of keeping you engaged, if you like 3D printing and DIY projects, you gotta subscribe to my channel because those are the things that I do. So if you like those things, you could put two and two together, right? You made a compelling argument, yo. Before I got started making this one, I figured I'd take a look around, do some research, and see if anybody had a commercially available product like what I'm thinking about making. And it turns out after some research, yeah, there's absolutely something out there. The big one that comes to mind is going to be the Corsair IQ LT100 RGB LED towers. Now, humongous, gigantic, crazy name that I never want to say again, but the product itself actually is pretty much exactly what I'm thinking about doing. They're RGB LED towers. One sits on either side of your monitor. They're addressable. They've even got cool RGB rainbow effects if you want to go that route. I mean, what's not to like about this product? Oh, yeah. I, um... Uh... I keep forgetting that things cost money. 150 bucks. Can you believe 150 bucks? That's insane. For something that is basically a novelty. I'm not paying it. I'm not paying it. There's no way I'm paying it. Of course, you also knew that I wasn't paying it. This video is about me making my own, so let's do that. But I'm going to tally up my cost along the way to see how well it compares to $150. And I'm going to bet that I'm doing pretty well against that. So, for starters, I'm going to use some aluminum T-Track. We're talking about $16 worth of aluminum T-Track. Cool. Nice start. I'm also going to use some uh, WS2812B RGB LED light strip. This is very cheap at only 14 bucks, and the density of lights is awesome, because I'm going to end up with more lights per tower than Corsair. They've got 44 per tower. I'm going to have 54. To drive it all, I'm going to use a pair of ESP8266 Wi-Fi enabled microcontrollers, one in each little pedestal. Those are roughly about five bucks each. That is about it for my parts. I'm going to use some 3D printed stuff. I'm going to use some, uh, some epoxy resin, spoiler alert. But for the most part, I'm talking maybe five more dollars in material, even including all the failures and everything else. Now, everything that I just mentioned outside of that aluminum T-Track I've used before. And actually, I've used it in this. You guys remember when I made this, the, uh, the RGB YouTube play button? You remember that video? Statistically, you probably don't. Not a whole ton of people saw that video. Just so you know, it was a pretty all right video. If you want to go watch it now, you know. No? Right, yeah, let's just make this first, and then later if you want to watch that, you can.
The base for this is 3D printed, but I was concerned that it wouldn't be heavy enough to actually provide stability to those lights for as tall as they're going to be, so I also filled it with some sand and some resin to help weight this thing down. And yes, before you even ask, I did have to do that multiple, multiple times. In a surprising twist, that surprised nobody. On the first attempt, I printed the bases, I put the sand, I put the resin in there, and it took me probably three days worth of work to get all of that done. It was a lot, and it didn't all fit. So I had done my test fits on all of my individual components individually. So I checked, does my T-slot fit? Yes, it does. Does my microcontroller fit? Yes, it does. Do they both fit at the same time? No, they don't. No, they don't. That's dumb. That is a big, dumb mistake. So you know what? I made a lot of mistakes in this video. Uh, I'm just going to start a tally. We're just going to count them all up. Just a big old scoreboard of my mistakes. Let's throw that one up there and move on. So I redesigned the base to be oblong, and I had extra, extra room for all of my components, even when everything was assembled. Everything went together smoothly. I printed them out, came out even faster this time after the redesign because I could fit two on the plate at the same time when I was printing them. I went ahead and put in the sand and the resin, waited for that to cure. And when I went to put everything together, I realized that I had made a, let's call it a small mistake. I got the clearance wrong on the holes for my bolts. That hole's too big. That hole is too big. So let's add that to the tally. Then I tried to fix it by using a 3D pen, sort of filling in the holes on this thing and trying to use a wood screw to kind of drive it on in there. Is it a good idea? No. Did it work? No. That wood screw started wandering and it started coming out the top of this thing. You can't see it very well, but there's a very noticeable bump right here where if I kept screwing in that screw, it was gonna poke right out the top of this thing. I got a little bit frustrated at this point. <clears throat> Oh, come on. Why am I even doing this? Do you know? Do you remember? It's only 150 to just buy them. Can I have $150, please? Throw it on the tally. Why not? Um, so let's do it for a third time, right? Let's just go for it. I was so confident that I got it right that I used some of what I call my special occasion sand. I don't know why I called that, but I have some white sand. It seems fancier. Is this a good use? Using it for... Is it, is it a good idea to use this fancy stuff for the inside of a base that once the bottom cover is on, you'll never see? I don't know, but I did it. The next step was to get the WLED binary uploaded to the ESP8266. And I know that sounds like some absolute sci-fi mumbo jumbo jargon, but it's not, okay? Just means that I have a microcontroller that needs some instructions jammed up and into its respective little orifice. The easiest way to do that is with the web installer. It's basically hands-free. Plug it in, press go, and then things happen. I think. I think that's how it's supposed to work because it didn't work for me. It says it's supposed to take less than two minutes, and I gave it 25 minutes, and nothing happened. So I tried again, gave it 15 minutes, and nothing happened. So I tried again, and you know what? Nothing happened. Now, I don't know how, but I'm sure somehow this is my fault. So whatever, let's throw like a half point on the board. Okay, I'm looking at that. That is obviously a half pint. Close enough. All right, so if I can't use the web installer, I'm definitely not using the command line. That meant that I had to use the ESP Home Flasher tool. Now, this is actually a really easy tool. As easy as the web installer is supposed to be, this actually is. And if you want proof, this is real-time video that I'm going to show you of me actually flashing the binary to my ESP8266. Surprise, it was incredibly easy. Thankfully, one thing went very well. So now let's move on to soldering this thing up and actually doing final assembly. 
Moving on to final touches now. I need some diffusers for those LEDs, and I figured the easiest way to do that is with some translucent PETG. Should only take me, what, like one try to get this right? It's a pretty simple design. Okay, took a lot of tries. Uh, took a lot of tries, so we're going to go ahead and throw a bunch of mistakes up there on the board. Okay, and now the board is on fire, so uh, that's cool. This was a silly concept. I don't know. Why I'm doing this. Look, I did eventually get those diffusers right. So let's get those things installed and put some caps on those very sharp aluminum profiles so I don't die on this thing. Oh my goodness, it is done. Let's just take a look at this thing because I'm extremely happy with the way this project turned out. Now I teased up top that there's a bonus feature, an experimental one that I'm extremely excited about. It now turns out it's my favorite feature and it's Philips Hue compatibility. Now it's not fully Philips Hue compatible. You can't actually pair these lights as though they were light strips on your Hue network, but they can piggyback the commands for an existing Hue light on the network. So whatever that light does, these RGB towers also do. Pretty cool. I chose the lights that I have in my living room, and those lights are paired with a motion detector in my kids' room. So whenever they wake up in the middle of the night, all the lights in the living room, including the towers right next to my monitor, turn bright green, 100% brightness. And I know that it's my turn to run in there and vanquish whatever monsters my children have thought they've seen. Or maybe there really are monsters, and if there are, shouldn't I get in there right away? I think so. This project was frustrating, but it was my fault. 100% unforced errors and self-inflicted wounds, start to finish, top to bottom, it was my fault. I should have double-checked my measurements. I should have made sure that one thing printed properly before I printed five of them. I don't know what I was thinking. But you know what? Even as frustrated as I got at my very worst in this project, I still love doing this. It is still fun. It's fun to make these projects. It's fun to make these videos. And you know what? It's fun to have people stick around all the way to the end because you know what? You're my favorite viewer of all time just for being here right now. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one because I'm definitely done with this one. Bye. Oh, because you're all synced. Mm-hmm. Motion of the kids are, I bet. I don't want it synced. That's my problem. I don't want it synced. It's special white sand. You hear about white sand beaches all the time.
from the white sand beach inside my thing. It actually took a lot. No. A lot of tries. Because I couldn't be bothered to just get the measurements right. Oops. Beat the bajinkus out of my microphone. I said bajinkus. <laughs>